Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Stephanie Tucker, fur bear biologist here at Game and Fish. We're going to talk fur bears today. Steph, the early season for mountain lions in Zone 1 just closed. Explain. Right, so we have two zones in North Dakota. I'll back up a little bit, just background about mountain lion hunting in general. It's a hunting only season for mountain lions. There's two zones. There's the Badlands, which is where we have a breeding population of mountain lions, and that's what we call zone one. And then we have the rest of the state, which is, you know, mountain lions take off. They're well known to disperse away from their natal home ranges at a certain age. And so they do show up in other areas of the state as well. But in zone one, where we have our primary population of mountain lions, we have the, the zone split into an early and a late season. And the early season starts right around the time of archery, it's late August. Big, yeah, yep. archery season for deer. And then it runs through deer gun season. And then right after deer gun season closes, the late season opens. And really the only difference between the early season for mountain lion hunting and the late season for mountain lion hunting is in the late season you can pursue mountain lions with hounds. But otherwise, you know, there's a lot of predator calling going on or just boot hunting going on for both seasons. So how did the early season go? In the early season, we had a harvest limit of eight mountain lions and only two were taken. So that was probably the lowest harvest we've had in our early season mountain lion hunting season since the season opened over 10 years ago. Zone two actually doesn't have a quota. Like I said, the mountain lions that turn up in zone two are kind of these dispersal sub-adult mountain lions. Typically, they've already effectively removed themselves from our breeding population. And so we don't limit the take there because there's not a, really a breeding population we're trying to protect. And so if mountain lion turns up in zone two, it's already no longer part of our population and then we let hunters go ahead after those mountain lions. Um, and so, and then in zone one, the late season harvest limit is seven or three females, whichever comes first. And so we have this female sub quota. Generally speaking, you can't tell the difference between male and female mountain lions just when you're out boot hunting or predator calling, but hound hunters on the other hand, who might be pursuing with hounds, might have an opportunity to differentiate between a male and a female, especially if they bay one in a tree or something like that. And so uh, we have this female sub quota to try and limit the amount of females taken during that late season to uh, protect that part of the breeding population. Let's move on to coyotes and okay. coyote hunting and trapping. Coyotes are by far our most popular, popularly pursued fur bear by both uh, tra traps, cable devices, and hunting. A lot of predator calling going on with coyotes in the state. Coyotes are also our most valuable fur bear these days. Uh, the fur market is an uh, international market. It's worldwide. It waxes and wanes. But really, the last couple of years, the only fur bear that has pretty decent value uh, is the coyote. And that's garnered a lot of interest from people in North Dakota. And because we have a really good coyote population, they're found statewide, really abundant numbers. You know, most most hunters and trappers, I think, can expect to see similar numbers this year compared to previous years. Um, by any means, the population didn't go up by drastic numbers anywhere in the state. Uh, but, but generally speaking, when somebody tells me, you know, they want to go hunt coyotes and they want to know where to go, I say anywhere. And if they don't find mm -hmm. a coyote, drive five miles in any direction and try again. Sure. And so they really are statewide and they're very abundant. Steph, we get questions about hunting coyotes at night. Explain. After our deer gun season is closed, we typically open our night hunting season for coyotes. It runs from the Monday after deer gun season closes until generally March 15th. And in the past, you know, night hunting was just something you would do like on a full moon with lots of snow because you could see the animal without any, any artificial light. Um, more recently, the last couple of years, we have allowed the use of night vision equipment or thermal imaging equipment for night hunting coyotes as well. And so that's gaining in popularity. Uh, one question though we get about that is, even though we allow night vision and thermal imaging, artificial lights are still illegal for night hunting of coyotes. So you cannot use any type of artificial light, red or green. And another question we get a lot is, a lot of the night vision equipment comes with infrared illuminators. And so these are just illuminators that amplify what little bit of light is out there so that um, hunters can see their target better with that equipment. Unfortunately, though, you can't use infrared illuminators with your night vision equipment in North Dakota as the state law is written right now. We have a state law on the books that prohibits the use of artificial light, whether it's visible to the naked eye or not. All artificial light for night hunting of coyotes right now is illegal. Explain the coyote catalog. Besides just the recreational harvesters, um, 
we have this program set up to match up those recreational hunters and trappers with landowners who maybe haven't had anybody knock on their door to ask for permission to coyote hunt, but they're more than willing to open up their property uh, for coyote hunting, or they're not comfortable with the number of coyotes they're seeing or hearing on their property, and nobody's come to ask to hunt there. And then with that, uh, what happens is, as a landowner, if you're willing to open your property up to coyote hunting or trapping, you go on the Department of Ag's website, and you give your name, address, and the county where your property is located, and then hunters and trappers can sign up on our website and they indicate the counties that they're willing to travel to to hunt for coyotes, hunt or trap for coyotes. And then we, it's mostly random, you know, based on again the county, county matching going on with those landowners and those hunters or trappers. Sure, so it's a partnership between the North Dakota Department of Ag and the North Dakota Game and Fish right. Department. And I would say though that for producers, livestock producers who are experiencing livestock loss or livestock damage you know we work with usda wildlife services program for that so if it's a if it's a landowner or producer that's already experiencing livestock loss the coyote catalog is not for them we want them to contact wildlife services directly um, wildlife services provides assistance to producers to help remove problem coyotes that are causing problems and killing livestock and they do that at free at no charge and so that's that's the program that's set up for livestock loss the coyote catalog is more just for um, hunters and landowners who, who are willing to work with each other for hunting, for okay. recreation. Okay, let's move on to a season that just opened here November 26th, I believe, the river otter and the fisher seasons. So the river otter is kind of a big deal. This is our second ever regulated trapping season for river otters in North Dakota. Last year was our first season and nearly 100 years for river otters. Wow. And it went over very well. It is a trapping only season. It's statewide, so you could take a river otter anywhere in the state, but most of our river otters are found in the Red River Valley and its tributaries. And not surprisingly, that's where most of the river otter harvest was last year. So in, in the Red River Valley counties and, and the adjacent counties. Uh, last year and this year, the harvest limit for river otters is 15, one per trapper. And so if you harvest a river otter, you have 12 hours to report it to your local game warden or district game and fish office. Just have to let somebody in our department know that you took that river otter and then we'll make arrangements to have it tagged. So river otters and fishers for that matter, um, we have mandatory tagging for them. And so after you take one, you report it to us, you remove the pelt, we'll give you a tag for the pelt that stays with the pelt. And then uh, we'll collect the rest of the carcass from you. And we collect a lot of really good biological information from those carcasses in, in cases like river otters and fishers. We have mandatory carcass collections because that's how we monitor population trends. So all the information we need on the how the population is doing comes from those dead animals. And that's why we require trappers to turn in those carcasses. It's important to note that the harvest limit of 15 river otters was reached on Sunday, December 2nd. So the river otter season is now closed. We've had the fisher season for what, a decade already? Or right, not? pretty close. I want to say we opened the, probably around 2010, we opened the first okay. regulated fisher season, modern regulated fisher season. And that season, we don't have a harvest limit, but it's pretty short. We have a one week fisher season. Okay. Last year, in that one week, trappers took 38 fishers. So there's actually, you know, quite a bit of harvest going on in just that one week of fisher season. And we've been at that approximate level of harvest for the last five or six years, you know, so um, the harvest keeps the population pretty stable. Um, and again, that's a trapping only season for fishers, one per trapper. And the fisher season though is only open east of Highway 281. And so there is a, an open and closed zone for the sure. state. The primary reason for that open and closed zone is we have, we want to allow a harvest of fishers where we have most of our fisher population. But in the Turtle Mountains, we also have a population of American Martin. And we don't want trappers trying to target fishers in the Turtle Mountains because they'll probably catch a Martin in the process. Okay. And we don't know enough about a Martin population to allow a harvest up there yet. And so um, that's why we have that those separate open and closed zones for fishers in the state. Okay, the North Dakota Game of Fish has over 200 wildlife management areas, probably right around that 220,000 acres of land. Obviously you can trap. Mm -hmm on wildlife management areas, but there are some rules. Right, you know, probably the biggest rule for trapping on wildlife management areas that trappers need to be aware of is that all of your equipment needs to be tagged with either your name, address, and telephone number or your equipment ID number, your equipment registration number. 
To get your equipment registration number, you go log on to your account on our Game and Fish page, web page. Um, and there's a little button in there where you click, just generate a registration number. That registration number stays with you for your life. Um, it'll never change, so you can use those tag numbers year after year. That registration number is also good for like ground blinds or tree stands you might leave on WMAs, trail cameras, fish houses that you leave on the ice overnight and things like that. And so that registration number is good for a lot of things, but that is different from um, private land in North Dakota in that on WMAs and new this year also is WPAs, so Fish and Wildlife Service also adopted those, regu those rules on the WPAs. You need to have all of your equipment tagged. How about cable devices on wildlife management areas? We don't want trappers setting cable devices on wildlife management areas until after our upland game seasons are closed because there's a lot of activity with upland hunters using dogs. And so we don't allow, you know, the, up, the cable device season is opened. It opened actually this past Monday, November 26th. But um, you can't use them on WMAs until after the upland game season's closed in early January. A lot of good information, Steph. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. For more information on hunting and trapping fur bears in North Dakota, go to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For fur bear biologist Stephanie Tucker and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.